Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna break down a live trade from this morning on AMD. I caught another nice trade. It was relatively quick, but um, definitely longer than yesterday's or the day before trade. Things looked really nice today. I wanna break it all down. I'm gonna show you my entry, why I entered there, kind of what my strategy is. I'll kind of review all of that. And then I'm gonna show you the replay of the live trade and then jump into the live chart so that I can show you my P&L on the day, show you how many shares I traded, and overall just my closing thoughts on the day. So before we jump in, just gonna roll the disclaimer real quick. I'm just a guy trading stocks. Don't, don't do what I do, just sharing my experience. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead, and before I jump into the video, let's just show you on the live charts sort of my strategy, sort of my take on the markets as far as AMD. As many of you know, I only trade AMD. I don't trade any other stocks is for, for day trading. I take one day trade every morning and that's on AMD. And I call it my closing range strategy or closing range breakout. You've heard of opening range breakouts where you trade based off the five minute chart or the 15 minute chart, you trade the breakout, that first candle of the day. Well, what I like to do is this is the last 15 minute candle of the pre-market. I like to use that as my range. And then when the markets open and they're most volatile right out of the open, I like to play the break up and the break down. Now, recently I'm only trading the breakdowns. I'm just taking short positions in AMD. That's all I'm doing. And you can see right here, this is the last 15 minute candle. So I was watching this low right here which was 87.30. And what I was looking to do was to get short below that low, and I picked 87.20 as my entry. So gonna get entered with about 500 shares. I went 300, let's see, I went 100 shares on Wednesday, 200 shares on Thursday, and now 500 shares today. Um, if you don't know the backstory on that, I've just traded brokers changed over from Thinkorswim to the IBKR, which is Interactive Brokers, and I'm learning the platform, so I'm slowly getting back to my normal size. Today felt really good because 500 shares is almost middle of the road for me. I'm gonna be trading 1,200 shares for my full size. So today was good because 500 shares felt really nice. I got to see how the fill played out, which was lightning quick, by the way. Nothing like Thinkorswim. So I'm gonna show you that, and I looked to get short below this low. You're gonna see in the video, I will get short. These triangles here and here, these are my entry points and my exit points. And remember, when you're selling short, you're borrowing shares to sell, and then you buy them back lower for a profit. So let's dive into the live replay. So what you're gonna see in here is you're gonna see my chart here. You're going to see my order window here, and I'm gonna get into that here in just a little bit, but let's hit play on this. You're gonna see we actually open the day and we move higher. So before I used to trade the up and the down, both long and short, but today, I'm gonna to stop that real quick, today this would have been a one hour loss. So what's interesting about this, if you watch yesterday's video, I'll post it up right here. If you look at that video, you'll see me talking about how I'm only trading short positions right now based on my metrics. I've got about 140 trades logged now. And the metrics are saying that my win rates and my profits, I make my profits off of about, or 80%, or 82% of my profits come from short sales on AMD. So my long positions have kind of created a little bit of a drag on my system. They do add a little bit of value, but in today's case, if I would have taken this long, I would have given up one R to gain 2.5 R. So I would have walked today, walked away today with 1.5 R instead of 2.5 R. So already by only playing the downside, I'm up on the week more than I would have been. So it's something that I'm kind of working my way through. And if, if any of you have comments on that or thoughts, drop those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. Um, so let's go ahead and keep pushing play here. So you're gonna see I'm about to get short. And this just kind of hung for a minute. And then 87.20 gets breached in just a bit. And you're gonna see that short position come in. <clears throat> so right there, I'm now short. 
a very nice fill. You can see it pushed back up and it, it almost stopped me out. It continued to go lower. And one thing I wanna show you real quick is that I just pushed the transmit button over here. So I'm trying to figure this out, but on my brackets, when I get triggered in, it's still kind of asking me to reconfirm my stop loss. So I just need to be careful with that and figure that problem out. If anyone that is watching this video understands what's going on, why this is prompting me to transmit my stop loss on my bracket order, drop in the comments, let me know. I'm still trying to, to learn the platform fully and I haven't figured that out yet. But as I hit play, you're gonna see that drops down. I do confirm it. And then once I go 40 cents in my favor, which I believe was 86.66 is what I was looking for, or 86.68, I'll come over here and I'll actually change my stop loss. So it pushes back up for a bit. I have not moved my stop yet. I'm waiting for it to go 40 cents in my favor before I move it to break even. I like to move my stop loss from 30 cents to break even. So you can see I'm looking at the details there over here in my quote window. And this one hung around a little bit. It, it took some time. It pushes down there. So right there I've gone 40 cents. So I just moved my stop loss. And now, worst case scenario, it's a break-even trade for me. So now I'm just hanging out, waiting for it, trying to get it to 86.44. And I'm just fiddling with my stop loss there, um, just kind of learning that part of the system. But very easy to do, lightning quick. Now this was my largest lot, share lot, since I've been trading with Interactive Brokers. 500 shares filled like that. I mean, it's just perfect fills, absolutely perfect fills. So we're still hanging. We creep back up a little bit. A couple times, you know, you just start to think when you're, when you're sitting with this trade, the psychology of it is, you know, should I take profit? No, wait, I'm okay. Wait, should I take profit? You go through all this emotional state. And that's why I like to lock down a 2.5 to 1 reward to risk ratio and don't break the rules so that your emotion doesn't have to play in. You know, if you're almost to your target and then it starts going against you, you don't have any option. You have to let it play itself out. So it helps control your emotion. Sure, I might be a little excited at times watching the trade, but I know I'm not gonna touch it. I know I'm not gonna punch out early. I have to get it to the full target so that my metrics stay on track. So still watching this, trying to get to 2.5 Rs, waiting for it, waiting for it. It's hanging. It kind of pushes back up a little bit. It gets pushed back down. And right there you can see I got my full fill, canceled my stop loss, I'm completely out of the trade, and you can see these triangles. That was my fill to get short, and then here's my buy to cover on my short position. So all out, now I'm gonna flip back over. This is the live platform. I'm just gonna move that slider over here and show you that next candle that came in. So there's the candle you just saw, nice big, big red candle. I'm gonna to go to the next candle. So you, it's interesting, you see, you know, you don't have to have necessarily an up day or a down day. The, the sentiment of the day sometimes doesn't have any effect on the trade, it doesn't seem. It seems like, you know, we could have a strong bullish day and I could still win on the downside. I just need 75 cents, which is my 2.5 R. So I got 75 cents. It went a little lower than that, which is good. I always like to see it go beyond that. It, went, it opened here, went even further down, and then popped all the way back up and then ran back to the upside. So excellent trade, wonderful way to end the week. I wanna show you my trades right here. You can see um, I sold 500 shares at 87.18 and then paid $3.52 commission for that. And then I bought back 500 shares at 86.43, basically 86.44 and paid $2.50 for that. So right here on the time, I kinda like to look at this just to see how quick the trades are, but I got short at 7.32 on the nose, and then went about 11 and a, well, 10, about nine and a half minutes almost in this trade, which is a long trade for me. I'm used to you know being in just a couple minutes, sometimes only 30 seconds, but today was a little bit longer, um, and it was a very liquid day for my fill because we had movement to the upside first. If I don't get an immediate move in my direction, I feel like the fills are better, the trade goes a little better, it's a little more smooth because liquidity is, is really high 
and the bid ask spread is really tight, which is important for liquidity. So let's pop over here to the summary. Here's what we did for the day. We sold 500 shares, we bought 500 shares, gives you the average buy, the average sell, total commissions on the day, $6.02, totally good with it. Realized P&L, this number here already has this deducted from it. So I guess you could call this the, uh, the net P&L. $369 on the day to close out Friday for another 2.5R. So what that means is I started trading Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, only three days this week because I just got this platform up and running. I hit 2.5R on each one of those days. So 2, 4, 6, 7.5, 7.5R on the week. I'm gonna be logging these trades in my traderview.com account where I track all my trades and that's where I get all my metrics. If you don't know what traderview.com is, drop down the description or go to the YouTube banner, look for the link, use that link to sign up for an account so you can track your trades and that helps give me a referral credit and supports the channel, so I really appreciate that. But it was a really good day. Realize P&L 369, I'll take that any day. On Monday, Feb 1, it's kind of a fresh, like, fresh breath of like, finally we're done with this transition over to interactive brokers from Thinkorswim, that nightmare is behind me. And now I can just focus on logging good trades, putting out content for all of you, and just doing the monthly recaps on my TraderView account so you can see month to month what I'm making taking this one trade every day. So on Monday, I think I'm gonna go up to 800 shares and take an 800 share position, and that's gonna be about two thirds size for me. And then I anticipate by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, I will be back up to full size, my full 1200 shares. I'm gonna carry a $360 R value for the month of February, and then I'll go to $420 on, um, for March 1st. And the reason that it's kind of odd numbers, the 360 and the 420, is because my stop loss is now 30 cents. If you divide 360 by 30 cents, you get an even, even share count of 1,200. It just keeps the numbers nice and clean. So that's the reason for that. $369 today. I hope you guys had a green day. Drop down in the comments. Let me know if you traded AMD. Let me know if you traded any other. Let me know if you traded GameStop. If anybody's still playing with that, I'd love to hear about that. Hope it was a green day. Have a fantastic weekend. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you got any value out of this video, I encourage you to hit that like button and go to the banner of the YouTube page and click the Facebook link. Come join our private Facebook group. About 220 of us just talking stocks and we'd love to have you. So come check us out over there. All right, have a great weekend and we'll see you next time.